Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, scientific committee for giving us an opportunity to present our research here this morning. My name is Fayez Qureshi and I'm one of the minimally invasive surgeons at the Toronto Western Hospital University Health Network in Toronto, Canada. Our study, study is entitled Economic Evaluation of Hospital Costs Associated with Laparoscopic and Open Inguinal Herniorrhaphy. I have no disclosures to share with the audience today. As everybody in the audience knows, uh, inguinal herniorrhaphy is one of the most common surgical procedures performed worldwide. In the United States alone, over 800,000 such procedures are done per year, and this accounts for nearly 15% of all surgical procedures done in the United States. Several recent studies have validated the clinical utility of laparoscopic inguinal hernia repairs with comparable short-term safety as well as long-term efficacy to the open approach. Using population databases, Rosenberg et al. formulated practice guidelines recommending the laparoscopic repair of bilateral inguinal herniorrhaphy in women. And in fact, many of us would agree that there is a role for laparoscopic bila bilateral inguinal herniorrhaphy in the vast majority of patients. However, several practice guidelines have recommended that local expertise guide the surgical procedure in other circumstances. However, given increasing fiscal constraints, procedural cost has become a critical metric in evaluating surgical procedures. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to compare the total hospital costs associated with elective laparoscopic and open inguinal hernia repair in a publicly funded healthcare system. Our primary outcome variable was operating room and total hospital costs, and our secondary outcome variables related to short-term outcomes from our patients. This, this paper was a retrospective study in terms of its design. We used a prospectively maintained database, and all patients undergoing elective open or laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair uh, through uh, April 2009 and March 2011 were identified. Open and laparoscopic repairs were done in the standard fashion. In, total, in terms of total cost, we define that as the total cost per episode of care from pre-admission to the time of discharge. Total costs were divided to direct and indirect costs, and direct costs themselves related to the consumption of resources. Operating room supplies, investigations, food and lodging comprised our direct costs. Indirect costs were proportional attribution of overhead and personnel expense that related to that specific visit. All monetary values are shown in Canadian dollars, and all, all values were also converted to 2012 value using the CPI inflationary adjustment. In terms of demographic profile, our patients had similar profiles in all regards except for three key areas. The first, our laparoscopic group tended to have a lower patient population with a mean age of 55 relative to 66 in the open cohort. The ASA class of our laparoscopic patients was significantly lower and there was a preference to do bilateral hernia repairs through the laparoscopic approach in our center. When we look at total costs for unilateral inguinal hernia repairs, there was a statistically significant difference in total operating room costs. The median cost for open unilateral hernia repairs was $2,400, and laparoscopic unilateral hernia repairs was $3,000. This difference in cost was the primary driver in the significantly different total hospital costs for unilateral repair. As shown on this bar graph, it depicts the differences in costs uh, as uh, uh, were incurred for each of the procedures. As can be seen, the operating theater costs were higher in the laparoscopic group, and that drives the significant difference in the cost between the two cohorts. However, this difference did not, uh, was not demonstrated in the bilateral hernia group. And in fact, the total hospital cost for bilateral inguinal hernia repairs was comparable between the two cohorts. The median cost for open repairs was $4,500, and for laparoscopic was $4,662. This was not statistically significant in terms of its difference. As depicted in this chart, while there's a smaller increase in, over, in, in operating room costs in the laparoscopic cohort, the difference is, is mitigated with higher pre-admission expense as well as uh, ward expense in the open cohort, resulting in comparable costs between the two cohorts. This study, however, has several limitations. The first and foremost, of course, being its retrospective single institution design, where there's inherent selection bias, both in the patients as well as in the procedures selected. 
Total costs did not include out-of-hospital medication expense, emergency visits, productivity loss, or opportunity costs. Furthermore, costs were not directly compared to hernia-specific outcomes, and therefore it's difficult to conclude on the true cost effectiveness of each approach. Given that this was done in a publicly funded healthcare system, its generalizability may also be limited. Nevertheless, in a Canadian academic institution, open unilateral inguinal herniorrhaphy is associated with a lower operating room and total hospital cost relative to the laparoscopic approach. However, there is no difference in total hospital cost uh, between the two techniques for bilateral hernia repairs. Given the perioperative benefits of laparoscopy, further studies are needed to evaluate the cost effectiveness of each approach and really define the optimal treatment strategy. Thank you for your time and your attention. The uh, floor is now open to questions, Dr. Qureshi. There was a uh, text question for you here on uh, whether there are any data on, and I think you addressed this in your, the limitations of your study slide, any data on out-of-hospital cost differences between uh, the open and laparoscopic group? Uh, well, thank you for the question. I think it's a, it's a very good point. And really, this, this study is a springboard for us to further evaluate some of our out-of-hospital expenses as well. What we're hoping to define is the true cost effectiveness of each strategy. And that will incorporate out-of-hospital expenses as well as productivity loss, opportunity costs that may be attributable to each procedure. And I think the audience would agree that the perioperative benefits of laparoscopy may justify the incremental difference in the cost between the two procedures. Yeah. Uh, Please identify yourself. And from and uh, I, I wonder if uh, comparing the two groups take in account the experience of the surgeon. In, in, in laparoscopy, it's very prominent and dominant, the experience of the surgeon on outcome and also on uh, OR performance. So it, it was a... No, I, I thank you for your question. I think it's an extremely good point that you're raising. And when we looked at our cost analysis, we found that indirect costs were higher in the laparoscopy cohort. And some of that indirect cost relates to operating room time. Um, and given that we are an academic teaching institution, we find that teaching and learning laparoscopy in inguinal herniorrhaphy is challenging. And that may have contributed to the longer time element in the operating theater. No doubt. And, and so that incremental increased time in the operating theater certainly has a higher attribute, attributed costs uh, to that particular cohort as well. So your, your point is extremely well taken. Yeah, it's had to be mentioned, you know, otherwise you, you present data and it looks that it's more exp uh, expensive, not really. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think as we look at the learning curve and as we look at particular different centers performing inguinal herniorrhaphy, we may see a relative difference in cost as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Thanks.